Here's a problem featuring an extension cord. We have a 120 volt feeder, a 50 foot extension cord with a one horsepower motor on the end of it. The extension cord itself is composed of two strands of 14 AWG. That's 14 American wire gauge. When you look it up, you'll find that 14 AWG has a resistance of 2.525 ohms for every 1,000 feet. In this particular problem, we have 50 feet. And using dimensional analysis, crossing out units, we determined that the resistance is about an eighth of an ohm. That's an eighth of an ohm for the strand on the top and an eighth of an ohm for the run on the bottom. Our objective is to find the voltage as measured at the motor. So we can do that in a series of steps. First, we can take the total impedance, which is equal to the impedance of the cord plus the impedance of the motor. We can then calculate the total current, which is equal to the voltage of the source divided by the total impedance. We can then calculate the voltage on the motor, which is the total current impedance of the motor. I'd like to think of these as the great steps of the problem. Symbolically, these are the steps you'd have to follow in order to calculate the voltage on the motor. Now, I like this method because it forces you to work the problem from start to finish without getting bogged down in the numbers. I don't know about you, but when you attack a problem and you jump right to the math, you sometimes make mistakes. You may have one of those instructors that gives partial credit if you can show the organization of your work. This is a great way to show that you know what you're doing, even if you make the occasional math boo-boo. I should mention that there is another way to solve this problem, and that is using the voltage divider. Symbolically, we can say that the motor voltage is equal to the source voltage multiplied by the impedance of the motor over the total impedance. At this point, we can shift over to Scilab to perform the calculations. I like to use Scilab because we can symbolically follow those great steps. If you're doing your homework, you can just enter it straight into your calculator. The first thing we need to do when we launch Scilab is to execute the Scilab.sc script. Look to the comments below and you'll find a link to this script. Now that that's done, we can start entering our various circuit parameters. The source voltage is 120 volts. The impedance of the extension cord is 1 eighth of an ohm. But it's not. Be careful. There are two wires in that extension cord. There's the wire going out and there's the wire coming back. Make sure you get them both. So the impedance of the cord is actually 2 times 1 eighth ohms. The motor is a complex impedance. It's 8.6 plus J, 6.5 ohms. The total impedance is the impedance of the cord plus the impedance of the motor, where the impedance of the cord includes both strands of wire. The total current is the source voltage divided by the total impedance. And the voltage on the motor is equal to the total current multiplied by the impedance of the motor. We should go back to my paint and clean this up a little bit. So right here in the great steps where we have the voltage on the motor is equal to current times impedance, what we really should have said is it's equal to total current times the impedance of the motor. And back to Scilab. Display voltage is a function I built. It takes the voltage of the motor as a parameter. And when we do that, whoops, let's not forget the frequency. When we use this function, we can see all the different ways to represent voltage. We've got an RMS voltage in rectangular form, an RMS voltage in polar form, a peak voltage in polar form, then we have the complex exponentials, and finally the time domain representation. Earlier I mentioned we could solve this problem using a voltage divider. Symbolically, we can say that the, the motor voltage is equal to the source voltage times the impedance of the motor divided by the total impedance. When we do that, we find our phasor representation here is 117.8 volts at an angle of 0.8. If you're curious, you can calculate the voltage drop across the extension cord. 
and that is the source voltage minus the motor voltage. In absolute terms, which is the voltage you would measure with a voltmeter, you end up with 2.7 volts. Or, if you prefer, you could divide that by 2 and talk about the voltage drop across each individual resistor, which is about 1.4 volts.